This, for now, is what Lyubov Sobol calls home. A windowless back room in an office in central Moscow. But it could be worse. Her colleagues are in jail and she could soon join them. We meet Sobol on Saturday morning as she prepares for another day of protests. She's been on hunger strike for three weeks now after the authorities barred her and a number of other opposition candidates from running in local elections due in September. For three weekends in a row, thousands of people have come out onto the streets of Moscow. Their unofficial figurehead is Alexei Navalny, an anti-corruption campaigner who's rattled the Kremlin with his meticulously detailed investigations. He's now in jail, serving 30 days for urging people to join unsanctioned demonstrations. Lyubov Sobol is the only opposition candidate from his movement who's not behind bars. But as she leaves for the demonstration on Saturday, the police are waiting for her. As she's bundled into an unmarked van, the rain begins. It doesn't bode well for the protesters. And yet, Despite the weather and the mass arrests of previous weeks, they make their way to the centre of the city. Not perhaps quite in the numbers that the organisers had hoped for. And accompanied by the riot police in force. A local election is not usually the kind of event to excite the passions in Putin's Russia. But something has changed. In metropolitan Moscow, many are incensed by the blatant way in which the authorities have taken away their right to vote for anyone other than a Kremlin-approved candidate. So we have this right, and I'm here uh, to fight for this right. Do you think you'll get it? No, we are kind of desperado, I think. Why? I think too small part of people understand uh, what's going on here in a, in a country. The protesters were peaceful. At most, and across the city, they numbered a few thousand. But this is becoming a sustained and highly visible expression of dissent. And with Putin's popularity plummeting over pension reform and a stalled economy, the Kremlin is feeling vulnerable. So the policemen are saying, if you stay here, you're going to get arrested. And the crowd is chanting, we have the right. And that's when the snatch squad set to work. At first, they went for the most vocal ones, the ones holding banners or chanting slogans. But later, they began selecting their targets seemingly at random. picking out individuals anywhere in the crowd. Mostly, the demonstrators went without a struggle. A few who did resist. <laughs> the 
The police made sure they regretted it. Я считаю ужас и позор. А вот эти ребята, почему они в масках? Что это за государство в масках? Маски шоу. Я бы хотела сказать, что мне кажется, что идет просто война с гражданскими. Понимаете? Война с гражданскими. То есть силовые структуры воюют с гражданскими. By the end of the afternoon, more than a thousand people had been arrested and the streets were cleared. But the protesters have promised to come back again this weekend. This is becoming an entrenched confrontation. So how has it come to this? Was this a knee-jerk overreaction by local police? Or does the Kremlin really fear even such relatively small-scale displays of dissent? Perhaps it's a bit of both. Putin's popularity may have dropped, but make no mistake, he's still the most popular politician in this country, and by quite a long chalk. And it's interesting to dig into the numbers a bit, because in a recent poll, Russians were asked, why do you think so many people still trust Putin? Now, only about a quarter of them said, because he's the best man for the job. Nearly half of them said, because there is no one else. As for Lyubov Sobol, she was driven to a police station on the outskirts of Moscow, detained for several hours and then released. The following day, she told me she expected to be re-arrested again and again. As Putin is doing hybrid wars, he also has a hybrid democracy in our country. On the other hand, there are no elections in the Constitution, and they are formal, as a ritual, but actually there are no elections in the but if this is a game, the Kremlin is playing hardball. Peaceful protesters have been charged with inciting mass riots, and Lyubov Sobol's anti-corruption group is being investigated for money laundering. In the world of Russian politics, war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength.